July 25th, 1909, 4.35 a.m., Calais, France. Along the quiet coastline, an unfamiliar sound is heard. A sound which is to signal a new era in flight. A sound which will shatter the natural barrier separating country from country, continent from continent. It comes from a monoplane called the Model 11, built and flown by Louis Blériot. The pioneer French aviator has lost 10 of his own models in experimental flight before attempting to cross the English Channel. Nevertheless, today, undismayed, he takes off from Calais. Destination, Dover. Today, he will become the first man to fly the channel in an airplane. He will become a flight immortal. But to Blériot, as he leaves the French coast, the 22 miles of open water loom formidably. Fogs are known to descend quickly and treacherously over the channel. Its winds to be gusty and unpredictable. Also, the aerial navigation of his day is rudimentary. Blériot himself will say later, I merely pointed my plane toward England. After 35 minutes, 30 seconds of superb airmanship, Blériot arrives over the cliffs of Dover. Triumphantly, he cries, le moment est suprême, and the moment is supreme. For by his flight, Blériot makes a contribution as great as any single man to the development of aviation. His achievement is more than a cross-channel hop. It's the first overseas flight, the first international flight. In the ensuing years, there will be other flights over greater distances and wider water barriers, but the objectives change, and in time, one objective surmounts all others, speed. Many prizes and trophies are offered. Many planes and many men compete for awards such as the Schneider, Bendix, Thompson. Climaxing the list of prizes is the Louis Blériot Speed Trophy, first offered in 1930. For years, the trophy remains almost forgotten, since no plane could even approach its requirements. Then, in early 1961, the world is given notice that there is such an aircraft. It is the U.S. Air Force's B-58, a bomber an operational bomber, the fastest aircraft of its type ever constructed. Its first formal speed competition is for six world speed records for 1,000 and 2,000 kilometers with and without payload. Five of these records are held by the Russians. On January 12th and 14th, 1961, at Edwards Air Force Base, California, B-58s, manned by strategic air command crews, easily shatter the old records. 1,284 miles per hour over the 1,000-kilometer course, 1,061 miles per hour over the 2,000-kilometer. Speeds almost twice as great as the records held by the Russians. 1,425 miles per hour is the top ground speed. Encouraged by setting these new records, the Air Force decides to go for the Blériot. The run itself will be over a rectangular closed course of 669 miles, touching points in Arizona and Nevada. The start and finish line is near Edwards Air Force Base. Sighting stations are set up so that officials of the National Aeronautic Association can monitor and validate data in determining airspeed over the course. Radar and tracking cameras are also used to provide official data for the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale and the Aero Club of France. The crew from the 43rd Bomb Wing, Carswell Air Force Base, Texas, is pilot Major Elmer E. Murphy of Poseyville, Indiana. Navigator Major Eugene F. Moses from Altoona, Pennsylvania. And defense systems operator First Lieutenant David F. Dickerson from Ardmore, Oklahoma. The crew will have to fly the course at an average speed of 2,000 kilometers, or 1,242 miles per hour for 30 minutes. Closing the course in one second under 30 minutes will disqualify the flight.
This is Ford One. Stand by, sighting station, stand by. B-58, now ready to go. Take off the schedule. Repeating, B-58, ready to go. Takeoff will be as scheduled. He's rolling. miles out. You're right on course. You look real good. Approaching the starting line. Mark Gate. Major Murphy enters the course at 44,000 feet and climbs to 50,000. Tensley, the B-58's ground crew, watches its flyover. The bomber is flying an average Mach 2 plus. Top ground speed is 1,385 miles per hour. out from the nose of the bomber are visible to ground observers. Lone Pine, California, at the foot of Mount Whitney is the final turn. And the roughest, almost 90 degrees. What do you think, Gene? Look good to you? Start your turn now. after a 93 degree turn at Mach 2. Now for the home stretch. You're closing the course. Mark Gate. Official time, 30 minutes, 43 seconds. Average speed, 1,302 miles per hour. For the pilot, it has been 30 minutes of precision flying, supported by the superb teamwork of his crew. He has cut the pylons so close as to fly only 27 miles more than necessary in covering the 669-mile course. Result, in its first and only try, Sachs B-58 bomber crew becomes the winner of the Blériot Trophy, its permanent winner. Paris, France. May 27, 1961. Le Bourget Field. The presentation of the Blériot Trophy is made by Monsieur Jacques Allais for the Aero Club of France. Prominent among the participants, proud and erect at 80, is Madame Louis Blériot, widow of the donor. Major Murphy accepts the award for his crew. After thanking the distinguished assembly, he expresses the crew's wish that the trophy be donated as a permanent gift to the United States Air Force Academy. The trophy, however, is destined to be not only a gift, but a memorial. For shortly afterward, Major Murphy and his crew, having gained one of aviation's highest performance awards, lost their lives in a crash during a demonstration flight. In a climax to the award presentation, Madame Blériot speaks. De la Coupe Blériot. Je m'excuse à la France de ne pas avoir euh, le talent que M. Jacques Allais vient de, de montrer pour... Euh, the constant theme in the remarks of the grand old lady of French aviation is her husband, his work, his visions of the future, the happiness he would have felt at the fulfillment of his most cherished hopes by the young men now before her. Again and again, she thanks them on behalf of her husband and of France. 
We in America join you, Madame Blériot, in thanking these men. We thank them for the honor they have brought our country. We are proud that the Blériot Trophy, after waiting 31 years for a worthy recipient, has at last found one in the Strategic Air Command's B-58. We are confident in the knowledge that should the time ever come, America has at hand its Blériot Trophy winner and the men of the Strategic Air Command who stand ready to use it at a moment's notice in defense of the free world.